Hello, everybody, and thanks again for tuning in. I've got a really, really interesting um, interview today. Um, lots of government guidance about completions and the legalities of property transactions at the moment. So I am delighted um, to be joined by um, Laura Birkinshaw, who is on the panel of GoTo um, and all of their um, legal conveyances. So I've got lots of questions for her, hopefully. Um, she's got lots of answers for me. Laura, good morning to you. Thank you for joining in. Good morning, Phil. How are um, you? I'm very well indeed, thank you. And I've been really looking forward to our chat because there are there are so many um, sort of thoughts and and um, nobody really knows the fine detail of, of, of what you do and how you do it, particularly in, in this market. But perhaps we should just start with what is the current government guidance? What is the situation on conveyancing? So currently clients are still officially allowed to move, but it's under strict regulations. They are advised not to if they can move that date onwards. If they do have to move, and that would still be put under the essential guidance of whether someone would be homeless, whether would it would affect them mentally, um, or whether they are required to get out of a property at a certain date. So still under the essential guidelines, if they can prove that it's essential and they can prove that they can stick with the public health guidance of the distancing rules, then they are allowed to move. Um, what the government has been a little bit, I suppose, grey in the areas is that how that's performed. So regulations, for example, um, conveyancing is regulated by two different companies. It's regulated by the SRA and the CLC. And I suppose that to, to a smaller um, extent, the ILEX, um, which has come up in the last few years. Um, so they've all had to get together and try and provide a bit more regulation for us. To enable them to do that, they've gone out to other people, for example, supporting services like the Society of Licensed Conveyancers, which I'm lucky I'm on a board member of, um, and to try and get something to push out to all of the community to assist us. A, can they move? And if they can move, how do they do it? Or if we've exchanged already in lockdown for a property, for example, in a chain, how do we do that? How practically do we allow a client to do that? And legally. Legally is quite difficult because once you've exchanged, you're tied in. Um, we had a large amount of solicitors and conveyancers assuming you could re-exchange a contract for a new date. Legally, you're not allowed to do that. And I think that caused a lot of uh, misinformation in the first week of lockdown. Um, so what we all did is we all got together and provided a clause that allowed people to vary their contract. So you'd put a new date in instead. So I can see where they were going with re-exchange, but it was just maybe the wrong wording. What happened if people had already exchanged and there was a chain involved? So we tried as best as possible to get people to change their date. So we submitted, all of the regulators submitted a clause that we all agreed together, which allowed us to try and vary the contract, which changed the date to outside of lockdown. I understand that when it's sort of one transaction, Mm. Figure of speech, if you get around the table and figure out, you know, a workable yeah. solution. And, but what happens when there's five or six involved in a chain and, and yeah. someone having a baby or moving abroad or, not, you know, it, all sorts of different reasons? It's proved very difficult, if we're honest, um, more so because a large amount of us rely on estate agency help to get us across the line, to get everyone agreeing to a date. They're invaluable to us um, the most of the time because they can speak to all parties in that chain. They tend to do it in a round robin call and they get a date agreed. And it's so helpful to us as conveyancers. However, the same, I think the day after lockdown, they told a state agency that they had to shut. Um, a large majority are working from home. They've moved their, their home working, but some haven't. They've just shut up shop. So that sort of hampered us in that chain situation that you refer to. We have found most people are willing to either move the date or, again, whereas essential moving, like you said, maybe someone is expecting a baby, they're moving abroad. The government put out guidelines at the very beginning, and I think a lot of people missed it, 
in that the same day they made the removal companies who are regulated shut down, they ensured that companies like Enterprise stayed open. So you could actually service your own move. So those sorts of situations, yeah. what we've tried to do is got people to get their own removals. It's very difficult, as I'm sure you're aware, moving house, getting a three-piece suite out, getting a double bed out. But it's a bit of a way around them still being able to do that. Yeah. So government have said specifically that those companies should stay open. We're also aware that a number of unregulated removal companies are still doing removals, although they, they shouldn't be really. They have been stopped. Um, but it, it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's just how we try and advise our clients to do that to ensure they are as safe as they possibly can be. Everyone all in um, is having to kind of think on their feet and, and mm. react accordingly and, and perhaps not getting absolutely spot on to start with because of that. But um, of course, mm. your legal profession, um, you know, things can be legally binding and, and they can come mm. back to haunt you if you don't get them right. But yeah. are, are you able to safely and securely do a, a complete convincing transaction from home yes yes you can certainly do it there's a few i don't want to say blockers but a few places where we struggle to be able to do that the biggest places i would say is that we are still adhering to a very old law in which we have to have deeds attested to so they need to be witnessed by a third party so, for example, if you're having a mortgage, you would need a mortgage deed signed. That has to be witnessed in the presence of a third person who can't be related to you. Okay. Which, of yeah. course, in, you know, instills the social distancing. So we did think at the very beginning of this lockdown that the land registry would put an emergency directive through, allowing that to happen. That still hasn't happened. For it to move along long term, the government will have to pass an act changing the attestation rules. Okay. Um, but we did think that short term we'd be able to get that change, but we can't. Um, I, I'm not sure, I'm not massively questioning my clients who are getting them signed and witnessed how they're managing to do that. We, we're aware of a project, which I think is quite clever, where they are signing it, taking a picture of them signing it, sending that to a friend, leaving it outside their door on a chair with not with no pen, they have to bring their own pen, yeah. they're witnessing that signature and then leaving the document there. So we're aware of a few people doing that sort of thing, mm -hmm. which is dearing to ensuring they're safe. Yeah. So I'm glad, you know, some clients are really thinking out the box and it's yeah. lovely. Um, so we are having to try and think how we can get that done. Also, a lot of our clients don't have a home set up um, working environment. So I think that most of us um, who run uh, or own businesses ignore slightly the fact that most of our staff probably print things at work. We know it happens, it's fine. So most of our clients probably don't have the facility to print at home. Yeah. So that has been a slight hiccup for us and that we've had to go and buy all of our, mainly our Fiona's printers to have at home so that they now can send all of the documents to our clients that we would normally probably email to them so they'd have it immediately. Yeah. So we are tending to still email them so they can read them in advance and then just posting the items that need to be um, wet signatured. Mm -hmm. But it is, you know, that those sorts of things are just tiny Roadblocks, I'd say, but we're getting around them. You know, we are still allowing completions to go through if it's safe to do so. The best ones currently going through are clients who are remortgaging because there's no requirement apart from that deed to move. Also, people who are doing a, a right to buy where they already live in their council property, they're quite nice and easy because they already live there. Um, what about your uh, your clients who are either involved in a in a sale or a purchase or were involved in a sale or a purchase at, at the time that this all kicked off? What have they tended to ask you to do? Have they withdrawn from things completely? Have they just said, crack on and, and get as far as you can? Or perhaps have they just said, hold fire, we'll mothball it, we'll see what the world looks like on the other side? 
Luckily, so far, we haven't had that many withdraw. Um, I did expect more maybe this week to come with the second lockdown now being confirmed. So I'm going to eagerly watch the stats now over this next week and see if that happens. We have spoken to all of our live clients and we've got over 600 live files at the moment. And each one of them, as a rule, I think we've probably got a fall through rate of about 3%, which is tiny, which we would probably expect in a normal month anyway. Yeah. Um, so most of them are asking us to actually continue as much as we possibly can to get them to the point of exchange. So as soon as they can move, they are legally able to do so. Okay. Um, we don't have many who are asking us to stop. There's a few. Don't get me wrong. There's always going to be a few, isn't there, that yeah. are waiting to see maybe the properties devalue in the time. We're encouraging people not to go down that route because... We have um, a, a lot of the lenders, I'm not sure if you've seen, are already publicizing that they don't think they're going to downvalue anything in this situation. They are adamant that this property today is the same property it was four weeks ago before lockdown. So, so why would there be any sort of valuation issues at all? But I think we're always going to come across some chances, aren't we, who are going to try it? I wonder whether the banks... My, I guess my, my worry is actually, will the banks be confident to lend enough people enough money there are some fantastic mortgage rates out there but actually mm -hmm. what, what will this be doing to the economy in a year or 18 months time and will people have the same earning capacity that they did have yeah i think i do think the earning capacity is is a good question and one that i don't think i'm qualified to answer but we had a very long conversation with a company called London and Country, who are very big um, mortgage brokers, and they talk to all of the lenders. And they are still currently saying that they're trying not to go down that route, that as far as they're concerned, that this 80% at the moment is a short-term issue, yeah. and that they shouldn't really, no one really should be looking at it that way. Whether obviously in three months time we might need to reassess, I'm not sure. They are lending a lot more. So over the last three weeks, they have gone up to again 85% loan to value, which for a lot of people, 15% is still a lot of money to raise. Yeah. But it's gone up from the 65% it was when lockdown first came in. So I think that is a real positive move. They're also going out and doing um, drive-by valuations or they've got a new desktop app okay. for valuations, which they were just doing for mortgages as the main. Yeah. But unless they think that there's something... So a normal bog-standard house that they see, freehold house especially, they will probably still loan on without sending a valuer out. So they are still trying to push current and new applications through as well, which I think is showing that they have the money, they want to lend to people, and they really are trying not to let this affect the normal working person. Well, let's um, let's hope it all shakes down nice and nice and cleanly. But I think actually you've you've given me a great deal of comfort because if you've got 600 live cases and only 3% of them have, have asked you to stop or, or have withdrawn, then that's actually a, a really positive, a really positive sign. Yeah. And I had my SLC board meeting, not last week, the week before, and that was very similar numbers across the board. Um, the out of the 14 of us, three of us are in Wales, the rest are spread over England very widely and everyone had very similar stats. Okay. So I do think it is positive. I do think clients that did want to move, they still want to move. You're finding solutions. It seems everybody is working together yeah. to put it all through. I think we'll find an emergence of a lot of technology. Yeah. And forward, a lot of people maybe like me who are very traditional solicitors going back maybe 10 years. I'm lucky I work for a company who's very um, advanced with the technology now. But I think that we will see a, a, a big move in technology and case management systems. And I think that that will help us get our clients moving quicker in future. I'm not sure if you've seen over the last 18 months, the transactions actually taking longer than it did prior to that date. Mm. Which is crazy, really, in a world where everything moves quicker. 
And it does always seem that the solicitors get the blame for that. Yeah, we do. And it, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a shame, really, but I think we've got broad shoulders. You know, we, we experienced much worse than this in 2008 and 2009. And I think those of us who were already practicing in that time, you know, this is just a small blip. We know it's, we know it's going to end quite quickly. It's not a financial yeah. crash. We are all going to get out of it in a very positive, forward-thinking way. Thank you so much for your time and, and words of comfort. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You.